What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and we will also analyze Liverpool's title chances this season in the second part of this video after Man City thankfully dropped two points against Chelsea. What an electric game that was and how do you see the title race unfolding? Do you think Liverpool can win at the Etihad against Man City in two weeks time and also shame on the Premier League scheduling for putting one of the most anticipated and one of the most important and biggest games of the Premier League season at lunchtime kickoff after an international break where the two teams could have 20-25 players playing international football combined and yet they put it at a lunchtime kickoff uh, that would diminish and that will diminish the quality of uh, football and uh, let's talk about Gonzalo Inacio because the 22 year old center back is a, a big transfer target for Liverpool in the January transfer window because uh, Liverpool want to sign a long-term replacement for the aging Joel Matip and sooner or later we also have to think about the long-term successor to, successor to Virgil van Dijk even though he's absolutely brilliant and he has been brilliant for Liverpool this season but um, he is now on the wrong side of 30 and uh, sooner or later we have to find a replacement for van Dijk. Konate also picked up another injury it seems like Konate uh, is now an injury prone player as well which is really worrying he pulled out of the France national team squad so at least Liverpool have uh, two weeks to get their injured players back fit and uh, Thiago hasn't played any football since like January or February and uh, I mean uh, he hasn't started for Liverpool and also Curtis Jones, Gravenbeck, Konate have uh, injury problems so Liverpool I think would do well to sign Gonzalo Inacio because of how injury prone Konate is we we know the, it's well documented that Gomez and Matip also pick up injuries and niggles throughout their career but according to the RS uh, Spanish newspaper Liverpool face competition from Real Madrid who are looking to solidify their defense as well in the upcoming transfer window. The report further claims that Sporting have no plans to sell uh, Inacio in the middle of the season and the only way that Liverpool can get him in January if they are willing to pay his release clause which is actually 60 million euros uh, 52 million pounds that's not like an outrageous amount for a center back Liverpool paid a lot more for Virgil van Dijk like three or four years ago and Inacio has started the season in outstanding form for Sporting Inacio has been very 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 impressive for Sporting who were leading the Portuguese league up until they paid I think uh, Benfica where they lost 2-1 because uh, Sporting got a red card and Benfica equalized in the 91st minute and won the game in the 97th minute so it was an incredible derby game in Portugal and Inacio has made 10 appearances for Sporting this season and he has been absolutely brilliant in their defense he has been the shining light maintaining a consistent statistics of 1.1 tackles per 90 minutes 1 interceptions per 90 minutes 2.4 clearances per 90 minutes in Liga Portugal additionally he has displayed exceptional accuracy in his distribution from the defensive half boasting an 89% pass completion rate so guys if you enjoy these transfer news update videos make sure to leave a like also help me out please so I can continue making these videos you can do my, uh, a lot by clicking the link in the video description and support me on patreon you can sign up for a few dollars and you get great benefits or you can make a one-time donation click the thanks button below the video as well thank you so much for your awesome support his current contract with sporting is scheduled to expire in the summer of 2027 so he still has another four years sorry three years left after this season so Liverpool probably have to pay close to his release clause if Liverpool want to sign him and then why Liverpool might like Inacio you have to wonder he's a left-sided centre-back who is a very very young but hugely talented and he exhibits a remarkable ability to anticipate and intercept potential threats
threats, which helps his team in regaining possession. He is skilled in clearing the ball when required and he is proficient at initiating plays from the defensive line at a towering height of 1.85 centimeters. Uh, sorry, 1.85 meters, that's 185 centimeters. This Portuguese talent is a formidable presence in aerial duels. However, it's important to acknowledge he has yet to face the challenges of uh, a top 5 league. The Portuguese league is not in the top 5. Jurgen Klopp might need to allow him time to adapt and acclimate to the team's style in 2024 and that's why I would favor Liverpool signing Inacio in January because if we wait until the summer we won't have Matip and Inacio would have to play straight away but with uh, Inacio in the squad in January we will still have Matip until the summer at least. Inacio's potential arrival could bring added tenacity and resilience to Liverpool's defense. At just 22 years old he holds significant, significant promise and he could develop into a world class central defender in the coming seasons. However, Liverpool was reportedly eager to secure his services in the January transfer window to bolster, you know, their defense and provide cover for the frequently injured centre-backs. I mean, even Van Dijk picked up an injury this season. But if Liverpool pay the release clause, then Sporting can do anything to prevent Inacio from joining Liverpool. And his release clause, as I said, is £52 million. Let me know, is he worth it i think the only the liverpool scouts know perfectly well how good he is because they have been watching him a lot more than you and i so i can't really say it categorically whether he's fi worth 50 million or not um, but he only turned 22 years old in august so he's still a very young developing and growing and maturing and i mean if we could have Konate, Gomez, Inacio, that's three pretty young centre-backs who have still a lot of football ahead of them. And according to the Mirror newspaper, Man United are also ready to activate uh, the release clause of Gonzalo Inacio, even though Real Madrid and Liverpool have a transfer battle on their hands for Inacio's signature. But why would you go to Real Madrid right now if you were a player I, and uh, Liverpool, Real Madrid and Man United were interested in you out of those three clubs just an absolutely insane person would go to man united or a diehard man united fan i mean they are in absolute disarray and i absolutely love it because i've been growing up in the sir alex ferguson man united era where it was pretty much the norm for man united to win the league to win uh, the fa cup or the league cup and to go far in the champions league this season though and in the last, pretty much, if to be fair, in the last seven, eight, nine years, Man United have been uh, terrible, which is absolutely brilliant for me, and I love it. Man United have definitely have more money than sense, uh, but uh, hopefully they won't uh, offer Inacio like a crazy contract, which sometimes they actually do, and that's how they get some players. Um, because they have a lot of money still because of their insanely successful 90s and 2000s period. What uh, tilts this to Man United's favor is that Inacio's agent is Miguel Pino. He's uh, representing Gonzalo Inacio. That is the agent who also represents Bruno Fernandes. They are both, of course, Portuguese international players. And Miguel Pino negotiated the Bruno Fernandes deal, which took Bruno from a Sporting to Manchester United in 2020. So he would be responsible for brokering any deal should United, Man United firm up their interest in Inacio in January so we still have to be wary and uh, watch uh, what Man United do but hopefully Liverpool can uh, get ahead of them and buy Inacio but I think personally the main priority should be to get a defensive midfielder in so sign Andre right now negotiate uh, his release or his transfer from Fluminense and after that is done and if we have enough money available then of course you can go for Inacio but the main priority should be to sign a defensive midfielder on number six because Endo sometimes struggles in that role McAllister needs to play further forward you know the drill guys by this point we have talked about this so many times and Jurgen Klopp was absolutely raving about Liverpool's performance against Brentford and in this second part of this video we will take a look at whether Liverpool can sustain a title challenge this season so Jurgen Klopp said that 
the boys responded sensationally well to the setbacks at Luton and Toulouse. We scored wonderful goals, a top performance against one of the most difficult opponents you can face and it was the perfect way to sign off before the international break. Can Liverpool sustain the title challenge? That's what we will look at in this second part of this video. Jurgen Klopp said we didn't play perfect football yet, not even close, but we fight our way through moments and we get results. We have to keep going with all the other teams until maybe March or April. And if we are still there, then we can start talking about the title. Until then, fight your way through the most difficult league in the world. The biggest plus for Liverpool is their firepower. We have Mo Salah, the best attacker in the Premier League, apart from maybe Erling Haaland. Salah has 12 goals, Haaland has 13 so he's matching him and Salah has also four assists this season so 16 goal contributions in 17 games absolutely insane Diogo Jota has eight goals Darwin Nunez has seven Luis Diaz has four but Darwin Nunez apart from his seven goals he also has five assists so that's 12 goal contributions for Darwin Nunez Luis Diaz has four goals and Cody Gakpo has four so already these five attackers have 35 goals between them in all competitions which if you think about the whole season we are about 30 35 percent through of the season so we could get a hundred goals just from our five attackers and hopefully if we sign a defensive midfielder in January then McAllister and Soboslay can go further forward and start scoring goals. I mean, Sobosley already scored two, but McAllister and Sobosley, if they have uh, the license to go forward a little bit more, we would score a lot more goals. And Darwin has provided the most assists for one player in the Premier League since the start of last season, apart from De Bruyne to Haaland, which was eight assists to eight Haaland goals, and uh, Nunez to Salah has seven Salah goals assisted by Darwin Nunez. And what is weird, is that Darwin Nunez, all of his assists were to Mo Salah. <laughs> I mean, sooner or later that streak will be uh, over, but that's just a hilarious stat. And the biggest concern for Liverpool is this defensive midfield slot. Uh, Vatarendo got his first start in the Premier League and he just won three of his 14 duels after losing all five of his duels against Toulouse. So his timing seems to be off as he made four fouls and one heavy touch resulted in a clumsy lunging challenge on Norgard which could have been a red card VAR checked it a lot of long for a long time I don't think it was a red card but it was borderline left back is also a worry even though Tsimikas put in a brilliant performance the continued absence of Robinson really stretches the Liverpool squad in that department and Liverpool had so many injuries that Luis Diaz was the only outfit player on Liverpool's bench who was older than 20 years old. There was a top 5 de debut for teenager James McConnell. So Liverpool will need to get some luck with injuries if we want to stay in the title race. Because having 8, 9, 10 players missing with injuries, you, you can't sustain a title challenge. Look at last season, Liverpool had constantly about 8 to 10 injuries pretty much throughout the whole season and we, 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 fell, we fell way short of the title, we didn't even make the top 4. And also the away form is a concern but I would put an asterisk to that because that's down to the referees as well because the Brighton and uh, Tottenham games we should have won if the referees did their jobs correctly. We got only one point from the, that. Of course the other games, Chelsea away, a draw is fine. Luton away however, we should have won that. But 18 points out of 18 at home. So we, we are 100% at home but just 9 points out of a possible 18 on, on uh, away games is, is not good enough. That's one... Uh, that nine, nine points in six games away from home, you can't win the title if you do that throughout the whole season. What's in their favor is uh, Liverpool's title rivals are also not in the best form. Man City are not as perfect and as relentless as last season. They still score a lot of goals, of course, but they concede a lot more and they lost already two games. So they are not looking like the invincible team of last season. Arsenal also have been a little bit up and down. They have a lot of great results, but their performances have been very inconsistent. But uh, Liverpool also had some hiccups this season. So I think Liverpool are as good as anyone in the title race. And I think it will be between 
Man City and Liverpool ultimately who will win the title, but Arsenal will be up there and Arsenal will be very, very close. But Arsenal need their key players to stay fit. If Saka has long-term injury problems, if Gabriel Jesus has long-term injury problems, I don't think Arsenal can sustain the title challenge. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what is yours in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.